Hey there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today I am going to walk you through sort of an introduction to image tracing in Brother Canvas Workspace. So image tracing is how you would take an image file, like a JPEG or a PNG, something that you would download from the internet, for example, or maybe purchase, and turn it into a multi-layered cut file, aka an SVG file, or in the case of Brother Canvas Workspace, it's a .cwprj, it's a proprietary file type. So how do you do this? All right, first, open Brother Canvas Workspace, easy, simple. Now, over here on the left-hand toolbar, you will see this icon that kind of looks like a spade. And when you roll over it, you'll see image tracing shows up. And so that's what you want to click on. And the first thing that's going to pop up is this choose an image to be traced uh, little box. So you can choose an image from your computer or you can choose an image that you've scanned with your machine. So like you could hand draw something, scan it with your scan and cut, and then turn it into an SVG using this system as well. Now today I'm just going to use an image from the computer. Now it does say here image file size needs to be smaller than five megabytes. So it can't be like a huge, huge high resolution image. However, a lot of images from the internet are too small or too pixelate. They will pixelate out when you enlarge them. So like it's saying the image file needs to be more than 300 pixels by 300 pixels to be traced. So it has to be, you know, of decent size. So I'm just going to click on an image in the computer, brings up my uh, like navigation window, and I'm going to scroll down to this guy and I'm going to click open. All right. So now the default is trace outer edge only. And so if you look closely, it is not tracing the inside of the O or the V, this little loop in the V or the E. Well, I don't want that. I want the whole thing. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu over here on the right and go trace areas by color. And then you can see it does actually get the insides. And this is really hard to tell, but I just know from having practiced that this is working too. Now you can also see up here, it says paste the image on the drawing area. Sometimes that's helpful, especially if you have like a lot of items in one drawing and you need to remember which ones you want to be which color that can be extremely helpful in this case because it's a fairly simple design I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to uncheck it and it shows the size so this is a large image and I did that on purpose because when it was smaller it was too small for for this the very basic image tracing ability of the of the program there is an advanced add-on that you can purchase but i only have the basic when this was a smaller file it could not see these little tiny openings in the e and the v so that is why i blew this up now this is a design i made so i could do that but that's just something to keep in mind if you run into problems when you go to trace it if the image is, because this was originally, I think four and a half by four and a half, if it's too small, that might be the problem. You can try enlarging it, I don't know, in like a photo editor of some kind, you know, paint or a free program can enlarge it for you. However, if it is like an internet image, it's probably too low a resolution to enlarge it very much. So just bear that in mind. You can also try increasing the number of colors. Sometimes that can help, especially with something that has like a lot of shading in it. But I made this very purposely very simple so it would be easy to trace. Oh, it does say include background outline. I'm going to do that because I would ideally like this square to come in as well. So I want that to work. So I'm going to hit preview looks exactly the same, although now you can see there, the square does have an outline around it. And I'm going to hit OK. So it comes into the canvas and you can see there is a square, there's the heart and there's the word. Now I'm going to go over here to the right. I'm in pr the properties panel right now, which is this top sort of brush icon. 
I'm going to go down to the third one, which looks like a stack of papers, and that's the layers panel. I'm going to click on that. And you might notice right off that there are a lot of layers to this seemingly simple design. I am not sure why that happens. It happens fairly frequently for me. I really only want like this shape, the, the heart shape, and the word, and then the square doesn't even have a a layer as far as I can tell. So if we click on the individual layers here, so we can see that the square is a part of this one that has everything on it. If I turn this off by clicking on the eye, you'll see it disappears. And if you notice very carefully, the outline of the heart and the outline of the love get kind of thinner. And you might be able to see that the insides of the loops are still darker than the outsides. Well, that's because of these shapes here. So if I go in and I start turning these off, like that's the upper loop in the L. This I think is the E. Yeah. This is the V, the loop in the V, the top of the O, the bottom of the O, and the bottom loop in the L. So to me, those are all like extraneous layers. I don't know why it scans it twice because the love is here on its own and the heart is here on its own. And yet we've also got it as one entire like canvas altogether. And then we also have these individual loops um, as well. You can decide on your own, like which you would prefer. Sometimes that might be helpful, like where you want to have these little inside pieces as separate shapes, in which case then you could turn off the other layers. But just be aware that that's a common thing that happens. This image tracing, not perfect. So what I do in this case is I'm going to click on this layer that I've turned off and I'm going to right click and I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to do that for all of these ones that I've turned off because I don't need them. And if I leave them there, you know, who knows, I might get confused later on and be like, why do I have all these extra layers? So to me, I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup on the front end. Now you'll notice I lost my square. Well, that's okay. I can go in and redraw that because it's a simple square. So I'm just going to go over to the shapes panel here on the left, click on that click a square, which is the very first shape, you'll see it comes in pretty small. So I'm going to drag it out a little bit by the corner handle. And if I go up over to the layers panel and I go to this box above the layers panel, which is called the edit panel, click on that. You'll see it shows me the size right now. It's 11.42 by 11.42. I really want it to be 11.5. So I'm going to leave the maintain aspect ratio checked. That means that when I change the width, the height will change proportionally. So it, it, they should change to be the same. So I'm going to change the width to 11.5. See the height changes as well. Basically that is it for um, image tracing. Now, if you want to keep them as different colors, all you have to do is click on the item. Now let me go back over to the layers panel here on the right. And you'll see that the, the square is the top layer. So if I go up to the upper toolbar, this little paint bucket looking thing is the fill color box. And right now it's transparent, which you can tell by that sort of black and or gray and white checkerboard. And then this is the line color and it's black. So all we have right now is a line color. I'm going to add a fill color by just clicking on the box. And I'm going to click like a light gray and hit OK. Well, you'll see that because that's the top layer on my layers panel, it covers up everything else. And that's not overly helpful. So the easiest way to change that is to just drag it, drag this down. So I click on this layer and you'll see that it turned like this blue line shows up as I start to drag it down. And so that'll show you where it is. So like if I put it here, it's going to be just under the heart like it is there. And if I drag it again, it'll be under both of them. And that's what I want. So I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to click on my heart and you can see it's uh, that is what I've got because it's highlighted over here on the layers panel. Go back up to the fill box 
and put make that a red. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my love panel. So I could click on the word love or I can click on the layer over here, go up to the fill box and I'm gonna make that black and hit okay. And so that's how you have multi-layered, multi-colored cut files after you trace them. Hopefully that makes sense because before we just had a flat square basically that looked like it had extra extra colors on it because of the design on it but as far as the cutting software is concerned that's just a square it's just flat now we have transformed that into three layers that are three different colors so we can cut them as separate layers and that's really all there is to it it's pretty easy i took this file and turned it into a couple of cards that you see here if you'd like to have the PNG that I designed for this project, it is available uh, in a link in the video description. And if you got something out of the video, I would really, really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. That really, really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and promotes my channel. These videos do actually take many hours to put together, so I'd appreciate it if you could do that for me. And if you would like, I would also love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Have a great day.